On the screen, I have a project open, which I've been using for my Udemy courses. This one specifically is for a course on testing Spring Boot. It's also an application that I built in my Spring Framework 6 course. So there's a lot going on in this application. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to JetBrains Juni. Juni is currently in a release preview. It is uh, being actively developed by JetBrains. I've been using it for a little over a week, and I've, I'm extremely impressed with the results that Juni has been pr producing for me. It works kind of like GitHub Copilot Workspace, where it'll go through and plan out a task and then execute the task in that plan. It also picks up some things that I've seen in Cursor. I've used Cursor a little bit, not a lot. Cursor is based on the Visual Studio IDE, and I, I, I don't care for using that IDE for Java development. I, I do use it for other things, but I find that IntelliJ is much better, for me at least, in doing Java development. So I'm going to show you some features of Juni that's going to be very high level. And what I'm showing you, it is currently in a development release. It's only by invitation. You have to go over to JetBrains, sign up to get out, get an invitation for it. I don't know when it's going to be released. I don't know how it's going to be priced either. Uh, that's all co to come uh, from JetBrains, but hopefully watch that space. I've been using this now for about a week and finding it very, very surprisingly capable. At the time, it's using Claude 3.7 as the LLM that it's working with. And in the last week, I'm not exaggerating, I generated and committed to uh, my corporate repository for my day job about 35,000 lines of code. I've developed prompts where I can point it to a create table statement for a database table. And from that statement, I have it creating uh, JPA mappings, and not just trivial JPA mappings. It is going out doing embedded JPA entities, doing relationships, I've even had it uh, map out many-to-many -many relationships, and it's been doing it very accurately. I developed a prompt where I have it build that. It does the Spring Data Repositories. It creates DTOs, uh, matching the uh, entities. It creates map circ mappers. It will create the Spring controllers and implement the API endpoints that I direct it to. And I even have it generating open API specification with a lot of rich metadata common sense stuff as far as like property descriptions and stuff like that. So it's been doing an ex a, simply a excellent job for me. I'm really impressed with the tool. So that's why I wanted to do this preview. And to get started with Juni, it is a plugin that you do need to download and in install in the IDE. Once you have that installed, you will get this context over here. And let me resize this. And this is the first time I'm using this in the, in the project. One of the things, if you look at the JetBrains help, it asks you to set up a guidelines file, file. So this is kind of similar to what Cursor does. Let me minimize Juni here for a second. And yep, let's get rid of that. This is from my other job. Copied it over. And I've been making changes to this. JetBrains has you use Juni to do the initial analysis and generation of the project. And you can see here some of the technology that we're using and talks about building running. This is all generated code here. In this section here, I've been adding in uh, additional hints to it. So much like uh, guidelines for cursor, this is going in and instructing Juni things that I want it to do. And I've been evolving this over the last week, uh, set things that I normally like to do with my Java code. And you can see some of the things here. And this is still something that I am developing. The best practices that was generated by Juni, as well as the troubleshooting sections here, are things that I added. Now, for the course, what I want to do is demonstrate using Juni. We just created this repository test I was using GitHub Copilot. I'm finding that it will work alongside of GitHub Copilot. Copilot's more for coding completions as you're working on it. So I've got both enabled right now. So let me come back over to Juni itself. And I'm gonna make that open. And you can enable Brave mode. This allows Juni the flexibility to execute commands. 
it will run the test right in the ID. You'll see the text, test window pop up and the test executes. And then it'll analyze the results of that and it'll make modifications to the test until it gets a passing. So I'm going to come up here and say, and say that's uh, data at JPA. So here you can see that I've put in a prompt for creating a test for the customer repository. That's a Spring Data repository. I'm instructing it to use the Spring Boot test place, the data JPA test, and that should be one word. And we are also adding a test to validate the validation constraints are failing. And I'm instructing it to create tests for typical CRUD type operations. So let's go ahead and execute this. And let me expand this out a little bit. You can see that it's going to go through and do a series of steps. It's generating a request to the LLM right now. Again, that's Claw 3.7 at the time of recording. And this is the plan that it built, and it's going to go through and execute those tests. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment. It does take it a few few moments to run. It does pretty good, but that's one common criticism of Juni right now. It does take some time to run, but the results so far in my experience have been ex extremely good. So I didn't have the video going, but Juni did go through and execute the test. All tests were passing. Let me uh, minimize the test context. And we'll go back up here, take a look at the steps here. And you can see it goes through, inspects the customer repository. It also c inspects the uh, customer entity, finds the test or finds that there isn't a, a test for that. Now it goes through and creates that test. And this is uh, something that I found interesting. It is picking up things from my guidelines. And in this case, the customer object did not have any validation constraints. So I was, I was a little surprised that it did that, but uh, probably a good thing to have that. So it did modify the underlying JPA entity to add in test constraints. So it could uh, test the, the constraints. And then it generated the, the test. And you can see that it modified the customer file. And also the customer repository has been created with 106 lines of code. Let me minimize Juni and we'll do a quick code review. Now if I come over here to entities, we can see here it went through, added in the JPA validation constraints. And it looks like it. Okay, I just added in the uh, creations, and I think that was existing if I remember right. And then also let's take a look at the generated test for it. This is using, again, it's going to be using the data JPA test exactly as I instructed it. You can see that it picked up the auto wire. It's going through. Let's see here, that's creating the customer entity. So it created a helper method to create the customer entity. So everything is good. One thing that surprised me about Juni is that it goes in and uh, creates comments in the code. So occasionally we'll add in code comments. So it does a, uh, again, it does a very outstanding job as far as code generation. This code was being generated by the Claude 3.7 LLM. And I'm extremely happy with the results of utilizing Ju Juni. This is really gonna accelerate a lot of people's development. So over the last week, I have seen Juni do some su surprising things. Like in this example, it added in annotations to the customer entity for doing validation constraints. And that was because I asked it to test flows, and it didn't ha have any. So it did add those in, and it did pick out some sensible defaults. Now, I've seen Juni a couple times struggle getting tests running. I, I've seen it, I'll see it run the test, get errors, go back, revise, run, revise, run, revise. There was one time that it was struggling to get the test working. When I implement services, typically for Spring development, I will uh, create a interface and implement to the service interface. In this case, I was testing a service. I couldn't get that service working properly. And it actually 
created its own implementation in the test directory for the service so it could get the test passing. I have to give it uh, extra points for creativity there, but really kind of defeated the purpose of the test. I went in, looked at it. The reason it couldn't get the test to pass in that example, I had a, a bad database mapping it. I couldn't find a database table. So Juni kind of worked around it by creating its own implementation. Ultimately, I had to go in and correct the creation script for the database table, and then the, the tests were passing. Overall, I am extremely pleased with Juni. It's been doing a great job for me. The JetBrains team behind it, they've been uh, adding in a lot of new features. Right now, I'm following them along on Discord. They're uh, dropping several releases a week and continually adding functionality. Again, I don't know when Juni is going to be released to the general public. I don't know how it's going to be priced or anything like that. I'm not sure if JetBrains has made that decision yet, but it has definitely been a game changer, and I'm starting to use it daily in my business. One last thing I'd like to add, compared to GitHub Copilot Workspace, I've also been using that quite a bit. That's been producing pretty good results, but it does produce errors. The quality of the code coming out of Juni is much better, and I believe that is because the JetBrains team is adding hooks into the IDE. I've seen Juni uh, do inspections from the IDE. It's running compile steps. It's picking up things like missing imports or missing uh, methods, things like that. It's picking up and correcting before it finishes. The end result is the code that it implements is much more likely to be working when it completes. The JetBrains team is continuing to prove its integration with the IDE. Uh, for example, right now at the time of recording, if you refactor a method name or a class name, it is using the LLM to do that refactoring. I expect They'll probably add that in and use the ID, which will definitely speed things up. Juni is still a, a very early product. As it matures, I think this tool is going to become more and more valuable. It's, it's definitely going to improve developer productivity a lot. So I've already seen that. It has uh, been inc doing incredible work for me. I'm very excited to see this tool out and working so well.